What we hope to achieve this evening, and I think we did, was really um, selling tickets to the general public, not necessarily Farm Folk City Folk members or anyone, having them come, having them meet the chefs, listen to the conversation with the producers and the chefs, and tasting the food and understanding what it all means to eat local, eat seasonal, eat sustainable. And I think that we have uh, 50 more people on our side tonight, and they're going to go tell their friends because it was absolutely delicious. One of these products is, is unique to the area that they come from. Uh, there's been a lot of love that's gone into either harvesting or growing these products. And you know, it's a unique flavor. That's uh, great things for chefs to work with. So they, they keep the local product on the table. They, they show people how good it tastes. And then people get curious about the vegetables and, and about the different vegetables like cold beets and, and purple carrots and prawns. Like people have never tasted them. And then they come to the, the farmer's market and they demand them. And, and that just really helps us out. some incredible Woods. We're just down from the farm, actually. Well, I think that engaging people in this setting that Benita has set up, where it's producers and local foodies, people that are interested, and chefs together, and just listening to some of the conversation that's happening tonight, very engaging, new topics are coming up, and people are asking about their food, you know, which is really crucial. We're having these conversations about where does my food come from. There's a lot of people wanting to use nice products, want to taste good things, but don't know where to get it, and don't know how to get it like restaurants can. So events like this really opens a, a communication means for people to get the products, right? Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the dish in front of you is a uh, sumai, which is a Chinese open-faced dumpling. Today we're doing that with Sloping Hills pork. Uh, Sloping Hills is such a great product to use. It's got natural sweetness. It's all you know, free range. It's just a beautiful product to work with, and uh, I'm very happy and pleased that we can we can deal with uh, Jason to do that. Absolutely, there, there's a huge draw for for just knowledge, I guess, of knowing where their meat's coming from. We say on the menu we try and source as local as possible, but uh, it just doesn't seem to sort of sink into the consumer. A lot of consumers that are looking for that product tend to find us, and, and that's a great link. But uh, from my point of view, this is a, a great education to uh, to bring consumers, suppliers, and chefs together. Sustenance is a, a festival that we're organizing with farm folk, city folk, that celebrates food, local food, farm fresh and fair trade food. Uh, it also celebrates the art and artistry of food. And that, of course, is very relevant to tonight's dinner, which is about celebrating local food. As you know, this is something I really believe in. I believe in the connection from the farmer, the fisherman, right to the kitchen, right to the table. And uh, I'm honored to be here. It's great. It's such a great crowd here and enjoying everything. I think everybody's favorite is going to be the fish. Mm -hmm. As long as it goes out hot. <laughs> Pairing of pear and, and UBC Farms goes back uh, quite a few years now. Good stuff. How are things going in here? Everything's great. Good. Uh, my name is Andrew Rushmere, and I'm the academic coordinator at the farm. And uh, it's actually quite a privilege for us to get to work with pear. They're basically uh, willing extension of our educational mandate. Very fortunate, few restaurants are able to source from that farm, and uh, we're highlighting uh, this evening some Cinderella pumpkins, some acorn squash. We've rolled that into an incredible milk. And uh, we've got some sage, and we're discussing a sage from the farm as well too, and uh, a small garnish of some ruby streaks as well that we're going to be utilizing uh, for a finishing touch this evening. We've got three wines in tonight from the Okanagan. Uh, what's being poured to you now is the Pinot you know, Oxua from Greymont. Passion for local comes from my grandmother because uh, she raised me. Uh, immigrant family, both parents work double shift, so I was raised by my grandmother and she would be uh, walk me through the garden to the kitchen and say this is how this goes to this and this is how this becomes this and it, it, it all seemed very sensible to me and it's it's just all I know so I don't know otherwise. What brings me here? A chance to tell the story of uh, local agriculture to the good people of Vancouver. I sort of backed into farming, uh, grew up on the farm, left, ended up back on it, fortunate enough to end up with a Horseshoe up my butt and uh, getting into uh, agriculture just at the time when it became really cool to be a farmer. And it's been a fun ride ever since. Who did you team up with? I teamed up with my old friend Karen Barnaby, one of the first chefs I got to meet in, my, in Vancouver many years ago. You know, everybody beats a drum about things and everybody has their shtick. My shtick is accessibility. It shouldn't just be available to people that can afford it. 
So maybe I'm getting teary if you just like, I get so proud about it. Because before, before the, in, you know, the Industrial Revolution and blah, 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 and everything started to come easy, people had to work for their food. We don't have to work anymore for it. Are we still getting peaches? I mean, anybody can create food and keep consistent with food that's, you know, flown from South America, you know, Mexico, wherever. But uh, part of the, the challenge here is using what's available now and what's available here. And basically what we want to show is that, uh, you know, sourcing ingredients locally is entirely possible and easy and there's so much you can do with it. They're, they're willing to kind of take the food, run with sometimes maybe the, the lumps that come with running a student farm, but also the joys that come with running a student farm and having students running the show. Uh, and they gloriously display uh, all that we can produce in the field on the plate. Always some really tasty creations coming out, but also this, uh, this deep consciousness behind the meal of where the meal comes from, whether it's produced from the farm at UBC or elsewhere. You know, think about where your food comes from. Think about supporting your local producers. We've got five producers that are here tonight that work really hard to put food on your table. If we have, we've got a product that we've got an interesting story behind. We've got the details of how it was raised, where it's from, what it was fed. We have the ability to transfer that information to a chef, to a waitstaff, and in turn to a consumer. It, it, it completes the loop and, and, and gives people education about where their food's coming from. People get excited by the by the local vegetables, go to the farmer's markets and go to the restaurants and demand I need, I need that they use a, local yeah. product because that's the only way, you know, like the consumer dollars get, is the thing that's going to that's gonna help the farmers along. You know, I, every year I sort of uh, come in wondering if I'm up, up for it and um, as soon as I and I sort of say, you know, I don't know if I'm going to keep doing the restaurant thing, but as soon as I get into the kitchens and see their enthusiasm, it just reminds me why I do what I do. Every year, every year it's, a, it's a different adventure. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Steve's a great fisherman in terms of getting the product from the boat to the restaurant direct. Um, you know, and that's one of the great things about him is that you know exactly where your product comes from from a guy like that. People on the table here tonight, these ladies here had no idea that a tiger prawn is farmed in Southeast Asia. So, I mean, there you go, right? If we don't teach these future generations that the, the, the simplicity and the beauty of growing your own food, then, then we, we we're not leaving a, a, a legacy that uh, needs to be addressed in a very serious, serious manner. Uh, for anybody who missed this evening, you got to check out Farm Folks, City Folks' website regularly to see when the next Dinner and Dialogue, Five Courses of Conversation will be.